Hi, David from Electric Teaching here, and I'd like to show you how to add or subtract rational expressions. Rational expressions mean that we have some sort of variable in a denominator position. And these both have x's in the denominator, so these are rational expressions. We're going to need a common denominator here, not much different than elementary mathematics. So what I'd like to do is to do a practice problem or a sample problem first that's more like the elementary mathematics you covered many, many years ago probably. I'm going to look at 5 24ths plus 10 27 and really talk about what is the least common denominator, the least common denominator. To do this, I, most of the time we would find any common denominator and we would probably just multiply 27 on this side and 24 on this side and then get some big huge denominator and probably have to reduce after that. Instead, you want to factor and see that this is simply 8 times 3 and 3 times 3 times 3. Technically this is 2 times 2 times 2 or 2 cubed but there's no 8's over here or 2's over here so I'm just going to leave this 8. And to get the common denominator here, to get the common denominator, okay, the least common denominator, you have to ask yourself the question, what is the most times, the most times any factor is occurring in any denominator? For instance, the 2 cubed here or 8, how many times is 8 occurring here? Once. Any 8's or 2's over here? None. So the most it is occurring is right here, and it is occurring one single 8, an 8 to the first, if you will. Then you got times 3, and over here you got 3 cubed. So I'm looking at 3's. What is the most amount, the most amount of 3's that have occurred? What is the most amount of 3's that have, occur have occurred? Well, the cube of them is the most. There's one three here, and there are three threes multiplied here. So the most it occurs is right here in three cubed. I don't need to multiply by an extra three to get the common denominator. So I'm going to leave it as just three cubed. Then for this sample problem here, you, can, you see then all I need to do to get a common denominator is all I need to do to get a common denominator is multiply this side by the two threes that are missing, or the nine, and this will give me one, two, three threes, and an eight for the denominator, which is our common denominator. And over here on this part, you're going to multiply by what's missing. Let's see, we need an eight. So I'm going to just multiply by eight. And this becomes a lot easier, not necessarily easy, but a lot easier than just getting any common denominator by multiplying them. The numbers get excessively big and you don't need them to be that big. Your final answer here then would be 45 plus 80 or 125 over 8 times 27. And it probably would have figured that out and got that answer, but I know for sure none of these will cancel with none of these because I picked the least amount, that I, uh, the least common denominator along the way. Again, the question you're asking is, how many times in any denominator is any factor occurring the most? What is the most amount of times any factor is occurring? One eight, three threes. In a sense, this three over here is covered by the three threes. Let's come back over here and try that for this problem. Common denominators. Let's think of how this will factor out. This is 2 squared times x, and this is 2x squared. So if I asked for the common denominator here, the least common denominator, how many times are the 2's occurring in this, in this denominator? And that's twice. And how many times is it occurring here? And it's once. So all I need is two 2's. It is the most it is occurring. A single x over here and two x's multiplied or x squared over here. So it's going to be an x squared to get the least common denominator because it's occurring, occurring once here and it's twice over here. So the most times it, it is occurring is twice. This is going to be a lot easier than just ha haphazardly multiplying denominators to get the common denominator. Then what is missing? What is missing? So if I look at this and I ask, what is missing? Okay, I've got a 4x and I've got a 4x squared. I only need x over x for this guy. 
um, to be have to have an equivalent fraction with that common denominator. Over here, what's missing in our denominator? I got a two and an x squared. What do I need? Two twos. We're missing a two. So now I've got a numerator of 3x minus 10. 3x minus 10. Final answer here then would be 3x minus 10 over 4x squared. Again, if I would have just multiplied to get any common denominator, there would always be reducing here. This is minimizing how much we have to reduce in the end by double checking and making sure we have the least common denominator. Let's try a more complicated one. One more here. How about x plus 2 over <clears throat> x squared plus 3x plus 2 minus 4 over x squared plus 4x plus 3, plus 3. If we were to try to get a common denominator here, we don't want to just haphazardly multiply this trinomial to this trinomial to get any common denominator. Yes, it will work, but you're going to create a lot of work along the way, and it will probably not be as enjoyable to do. Not that what I'm doing is making it any more enjoyable. Let's first factor these and rewrite them. So let's first factor them. The first fraction there is x plus 2 over, let's see, this factors to x plus 1 and x plus 2. The next one is minus 4 over x plus 1 and x plus 3. I'm not sure if you can see that. I might be off the video here. Let me fix that if I can. I'm going to pause real quick. Okay, see if I can, hopefully that'll work and you can see that. All right, keep going here. Whoops, sorry about that. Keep going here. Let's see, we got a um, common denominator. What do we need for the common denominator? Well, we have an x plus 1, and it is occurring one time, one time. So I need 1x plus 1. I need 1x plus 2. And I need a single x plus 3. Each one of the factors is occurring only once. Therefore, I only need one of them down here of each. Okay, even though there's x plus 1 and x plus 1 twice total, you have to ask in each denominator what is the most it is occurring, and it is occurring just once. Now we can see what's missing. What's missing? For instance, what's missing in this one? We are missing the x plus 3. We are missing the x plus 3 in the denominator. So I will have to multiply that out. I'll have to foil out that numerator. <clears throat> Over on the other side, if I was able to put that up there, what would I put the multiplier as? What am I missing? I am missing an x plus 2. So I multiply by a form of 1 so it doesn't change the fraction. This is also very similar to what your 4th, 5th, 6th grade teacher said is what you multiply to the bottom, you've got to multiply to the top. And that's basically using the identity idea. What's our new numerator? Well, we've got to foil this out x squared, middle term looks to be a 3x and 2x, or 5x, and last term looks to be 2 times 3, or 6. Over here, let me put my little x plus 2 up here so I can see exactly what it looks like when I distribute it. I'm going to get a negative 4x, a negative 4x, and I'm going to get a negative 8, a negative 8. Collecting like terms, x squared plus x looks like minus 2 all over x plus 1, x plus 2, and x plus 3. So this is my answer in black here. Sorry about the red over here. But this is my current answer in black right now. I'm thinking that it might have some canceling. It might even cancel. This is a quadratic trinomial. Hopefully you always want to break that down. Does that break down? Factors of 2 and 1 with a difference of 1. Oh yeah, it should. So how about x plus 2 and x minus 1? That does look to be the breakdown. Check the middle term. It checks. Then it's over x plus 2, x plus 1, and x plus 3. So because I have created multiplying factors, I can cancel or make a 1. This is no difference than adding a 1, but I can make a 1 out of this. Final answer then is x, x minus 1 x minus 1 over x plus 1 times x plus 3. 
I just realized that I probably could have got this answer a lot easier, but I was using this one as a teaching moment. I have a feeling this fraction simplified early. And, you know, if you can do that, you should always do that. But I wanted to use this as a teaching moment to teach that common denominator trick in getting it the least amount, factoring once you finish to make sure you've covered everything, okay, and make sure that you've got your, an answer that, um, uh, uh, and I usually leave it in factored form. I think that this is easier. We can identify asymptotes, holes, etc. So, I'm David from Electric Teaching. I hope that this common denominator, adding rationals, has helped.